Hi everybody, Sean Hayes here with Sean America Audio and Visual. This is part two of our second lesson where we're going to learn a little bit about my favorite program, Pinhole Designer. If we look here at the first tab, Pinhole Diameter and Focal Length, this here will calculate an optimal focal length for a given pinhole diameter right here. It will calculate an optimal pinhole diameter for a given focal length and then once you place both of those numbers in the appropriate boxes right here, it will then give you an F number right here. The way it calculates all of that is based on this formula right here. The default constant is a constant developed by Lord Rayleigh, but you can also select another constant, but I find the Lord Rayleigh is perfectly sufficient. So let's take an example, specifically the example that we used in part one, and that was a focal length of 44.5 millimeters. Now that shows me here an optimal pinhole diameter of 0 0.2972 millimeters. Well, unfortunately, as I said in the first part, I don't actually own a micro drill bit that small. That's not a problem. Go ahead and just place the pinhole diameter that you have closest to that. In my case is 0 0.3429 millimeters and that gives me an F number of 130 right here. Another great thing is you can also change your units from millimeters to inches which will let you work in whatever unit you're most comfortable with. Now as you notice when you place a number into each of these boxes here it shows over here an optimal number to go with either of the calculations. Now the great thing about pinhole photography is you're not tied into that. This is just a calculation that was figured out a long time ago of what they think is the optimal ratio between your pinhole diameter and your focal length. But you're not tied into that at all. In fact, I encourage you to experiment with all sorts of different sizes. Okay, so now that we have this information, how do we figure out all that nice exposure information? So let's go ahead and click on the Exposure tab. Now here, you have an area here for your F number. I've already placed an F of 130 in there. Now down below here, you have an option to include reciprocity failure for a specific film. What reciprocity failure is, is essentially the fact that film becomes less efficient the less light that you give it. So what that means is at longer exposure times it actually takes longer time than you would think that it would. So what this does is this allows you to select for many films that are already pre-programmed in. I personally use Kodak Gold 200 film but I have found the Fuji Color Supra 200 film reciprocity data is very close to that and works just fine. But you can select whatever film there you'd like. Now all you have to do is come here and hit calculate and it will give you the information for your given film and your given camera. If you notice here it shows you F for 22 and then it shows you the resulting time. So what that means is if your light meter set to an F of 22 shows that you need an exposure of 1 60th of a second for your camera what you really need is 1 half of a second for an F of 130. You can also save this information as a Microsoft Excel file and then print it out later. This software does some other things that are very helpful such as calculating angle of view. I've already typed in here an example of 35 millimeter film and it shows a little diagram. It'll also figure out some magnification stuff 
and some things about zone plating, which is definitely going to be another lesson. As for any of this, go ahead and just play with it and have fun. This is a great tool for designing pinhole cameras. I've used many others that are out available online and I've found this to be the best in my opinion. So go ahead, have some fun with Pinhole Designer, have some fun shooting pinhole camera, and this is Sean Hayes signing out saying happy shooting, thanks.